this next lure that I had kind of worked you up about, um, it's going to be a little different. This is going to be the process, I'm going to document the process of me trying to invent a lure that has never been invented, as far as I know. Um, there's some lures out there that do some similar actions, but this is kind of unique. And so I thought that this next series of videos would be to document that process of me trying to figure that out and just let you see what I go through. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is uh, find a picture of what I want to do, and it's I'm going to do a lizard. It's going to be a topwater lizard. So let's just see what Google has to offer. Look at that. Is that awesome or what? You know he's doing the Tarzan call. Oh man, this guy's way too many psychedelics. Too many magic mushrooms. What? Scuba diving lizard can stay underwater. Holy cow, is that awesome or what? Look at this guy. He makes his own air bubble. Fantastic. Heavy metal rocker. Oh, is this guy bad looking or what? That is so cool. Geckos. I like geckos. Let's do a search on geckos. Oh, here it is. That's it. That's it right there. That's what I'm looking for. This is the guy I'm going to use for my uh, model. Yeah, right there. So we've selected a lizard. It's going to be the uh, green mattis. Madagascarian gecko lizard and uh, all we need to do now is draw him up and get started. Okay. I've done some sketches and uh, try to explain these a little bit. You know this is the idea that I have for the lizard. The, um, the body shape is obvious here and uh, the arms, um, I've got an axis, a wire that goes through the body here and will bend and create support for these arms. Now, if I just made them completely flat and uh, you know the body three-dimensional, when you pull it through the water, I'm imagining that as it sits like this, it will not naturally rotate because it'll just ski on top of the surface. It'll just, you know, plane out on the surface of the water. And what's going to be really critical is the water level. You know, if, if my water level can stay right here, that will be optimal because uh, I'll have, you know, equal amount of resistance turning the, the legs with the water as it's being pulled this direction. And uh, freedom in the air to move and rotate so that's going to be the drawback on this lure is can you honestly fish in a way where you know your speed change and whatnot doesn't cause this lure to plane higher come out of the water too far or you know we put too much weight in it and it sets too deep and at a slow rate it, it just it, you know it's going to change the action too much so that's my concern so to get started to test this out, I'm going to go ahead and cut this body shape out, minus the arms and minus the tail. The tail will just be a rubber tail, I think, with a, uh, a hook that we can replace the tail, at least for now. And uh, that'll you know, create a nice uh, weedless uh, presentation, you know, so this thing can be fished around weeds and stuff.
Okay. Well, that was a flop. Um. Okay, so you're probably asking, what does it feel like to spend uh, an inordinate amount of time working on something that's just a complete failure? Well, just about like this. Get out. And don't come back until you've redeemed yourselves. This is my next design. Um, here is the lizard, of course, and then um, the actual um, arms, uh, because I try to want to make it weedless, they're all, you know, the lure's going to be going this way. Um, weeds or whatever growing up and you're pulling it through you want them to bounce off and be uh, less likely to catch so both sets of arms will be you know angled back and they'll be twisted I'm trying to show that here in the sketch where they'll be twisted like a propeller so one will be pitched one direction and the other one will be pitched the other direction so you'll get kind of a rotation this way back here and then you'll get kind of a rotation this way here so, this is the design I think that uh, will be a lot more friendly to uh, what I'm trying to accomplish because this can work if it's completely submerged. Um, the, the water level is not as critical, um, whether it's here or here or what, it's not as critical. This is going to work more like a prop, like uh, a lot of the prop baits. So I think this has a lot more potential to have good action. You know, Lloyd, just when I think you couldn't possibly be any dumber, you go and do something like this. And totally redeem yourself! <laughs> uh, that was a really uh, exciting and uh, successful test, so I'm really uh, <laughs> tickled to death. So. Uh, that worked really well. I'm excited to get the next version out, and uh, as soon as I get it put together, we'll take a look at how it works. Okay, what I did basically was take a pattern. No, not that pattern. This is more like this pattern. This is what I did. And I basically uh, you know, traced it onto the aluminum, and then I took and snipped the aluminum like here halfway through, and then here halfway through, and then I 
twisted the arms and bowed them back gently. And then I took that shape and I built it up with Bondo. So I don't know if it'll focus in on that, but I've got a set of arms now and one spins one direction and the other spins the other direction. Okay, here's the final test. It's all painted up. Got more of an appropriate size tail on it. Got the treble hook on it. She's ready for her final test. And uh, if you would, in the comments, leave what you think the name of this rascal should be. I, uh, so far, I like the name Jesus Lizard. If you've ever seen a Jesus Lizard, they actually run on the water. So that's kind of appropriate. But check it out and see what you think.